OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Thank you for joining us, everybody, everybody here. So um, what we're gonna do is talk about our, our uh, pilot program and some of the success stories and what some of you guys did during the program and how you were successful and what you did differently. Um, we've also got some student success stories as well. So um, what we'll do is we'll start with Rachel, um, who's with us at New Readers Press. So she's gonna do a quick overview of what we're talking about with New Readers Press Online and what it is. And then, and then we'll go to um, Dr. Baller and then we'll go to Dr. Gonzalez. And, um, and then we're gonna kind of make it like a free forum discussion. So we've got some right. questions coming up. And then if anybody here or if online has questions, um, and, and Kathy, where, where are you from? I am one of your friends from Mount Diablo Adult Education. We're in Concord, California. Mount Diablo, yes. Yeah, yeah hi. We love Mount Diablo. I wonder where that is. Yeah. You guys have <laughs> snow? Yes. Of course you do. Oh my gosh. Yes, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Are you do you guys have sun? It's super sunny here today. It's, it's a good day today. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's beautiful here today. This the sun is shining. It's it's pretty cold, but um beautiful views, you know, everywhere around us you look and you see just a little bit of snow. So it's it's a nice change. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, we've got some beautiful snow capped mountains here today. So okay, cool. We've got some more people joining, and as we as we go, we'll just Keep it, keep it flowing. So I'll turn it over to Rachel. You can share your screen. And um, as people join, they'll we'll just keep going. All right, can you see my screen okay? Yep. Yes. Yep. Great. So this is New Readers Press Online Learning. I'm just going to very quickly show you what we have to offer currently um, and what this program entails. So. At the top here, I'm gonna do a quick drop down to show you that we have GED courses in all four subjects, high set courses in all four subjects, pre-HSE courses in all four subjects, as well as TABE courses now in levels E, M, D, and A for reading, language, and math. So lots and lots of content available. I'm just going to jump into the platform because when you get into the platform, what you'll notice is that it's the same for every course. It has the same format. So it's really easy to use one or the other, depending on what you have. Um, Ava will share with you because she's using many of these courses, um, how easy it is to navigate once you kind of know how to navigate it the first time, how easy it is to navigate the other courses. This is what the course itself looks like. So for our adult ed learners, um, it's very user friendly. Mm -hmm. They can set up a course calendar that allows them to sort of make their own personal plan where they can follow their knowledge goal points and their progress at the top. There's a full introduction in the course that allows them to learn how to use the platform first, and then they have a full structured plan that starts with the introduction and a pretest. You could take that pretest and design a specific curriculum for the student, or you can let them work through the full structured plan. So as you can see, as students work through each unit has lessons, each lesson is incorporated typically with three components, a lesson, vocabulary flashcards, and then practice questions. <laughs> At the end of each unit, there's a unit review. So this is very, very similar to many of the New Readers Press print products that you might be using if you use our pre-HSE core skills books um, or our high set or GED skills books. Those are also very similar. There's a unit review test. And there within each of the lessons, there's built-in tools. So I'll just kind of show you a little bit of content here as an example. There are some videos built into the content. There's a toolbox in our mathematics courses that includes calculator, formula, periodic table, formula sheet. All of this is built right into the platform to make it very easy for students to use. If you're working on those college and career readiness skills, there's a highlighter. 
Um, there's bookmarking and there's a notes section where they can type in their own notes so they can take notes as they're learning. Um, you may notice there's a little audio component here in our lower level courses that allows you to have the program read aloud. Rounding numbers. <laughs> to round means to change a number to a certain place value so that it is easier to work. You'll also <laughs> notice we can switch that to gradual. I hear Eva chuckling. With. <laughs> Click the image to watch a video about what a round number is, why round numbers are used, and how we use place values to round numbers. Hope everyone can hear that okay where you are. The other big component within um, online learning is that we have this confidence level rating. Now this is great if you're using it really explicitly because the student is self-evaluating um, using that metacognition and saying, how do I feel about the content I just learned? As they mark confidence levels, that information is tracked and it's available for them to see for themselves so they can identify where they have low confidence levels, but it's also available on the teacher side so you can actually identify the lowest confidence levels with certain things um, in your class or with an individual. The flashcards are super simple. They've got uh, just like what you make at home, except that they're technologically advanced. <laughs> you have yes, no, or kind of as your answers. Students can review as they respond. That's also tracked. And so each question that they respond to, it's going to keep track of their responses. You can even create your own That's set. That's really cool within this so if you do you know reading circles and you want to include your own vocabulary words for that text that you're using you can actually build your own sets in here there are even community sets that are available so if you decide to share something you might find a community set in one of our courses as well that someone else has built that you can use i made one with klingon which was fun <laughs> <laughs> The practice questions are much like small quizzes, so you're quickly e able to see how the student is performing on those units and individual lessons. You can quickly see their scores throughout the entire program. And then tests are the same way where you can get pretty detailed information. We're working on really improving our reporting dashboard. I'm excited for the upcoming changes that will be happening, but you can keep track of how a student is performing on each individual test. And it shows a way for you to review not just how they're performing and what they have right or wrong, but also where that falls so that you can remediate and put them back into the units and lessons that they might need to review. The other favorite feature I love in here is a search feature. So if I wanted to look for something specific like ratios, if I'm teaching and I know that's my subject matter, I can search for something and quickly find a lesson and a unit that coordinates with my own curriculum in class. So just to share overview, quick overview, hope that helps. That's great, thank you. You're welcome. Questions so far for Rachel before we move to the next? Yeah. Okay. Cassie, I, I, I have a question. Yes. Um, Rachel, when you're looking at this screen, is this the student screen or the instructor asking. screen? This is all the student screen, but every instructor has access to a study dashboard, which is the student screen. So, you know, it's kind of like having a teacher edition of the student courses. So you can even build lesson plans in, which I personally have done that for myself. I've gone in and when I was teaching, I would literally go into this lesson and I would use this note section to say, hey, number one, we're gonna do this activity. And then number two, you know, this is the PDF that I'm including for this, or I might link to a video or a website that I want to go through with my students so they can have some interactive online work. Um, and, and so that's totally, you can, you can use this in a different way for yourself, but this is exactly what it looks like for the students as well. Okay, thank you. Sure, great Good question. Much. Okay, let's um, move over to uh, Dr. Bauer. You want to share your screen or if you want to? Well, let me talk a little bit first, maybe. Um, so we're an adult school, I think probably pretty typical in the sense that we have students, at least for the purpose of this, for this conversation, 
who come in with the goal of finishing high school. And they just they usually come in and say, I want to take the GED. That is kind of the, the, the default. And then it's on us to counsel them around um, if this, that's actually a likely goal within the next 20 years or so, or are they better off for us to look at their transcript that they already have from high school, identify the gaps in credits that they have, and we are actually still teaching real classes. So we're, we have teachers in classrooms that teach US history one, or that teach you know algebra. And so the first, the reason why I actually got involved with this was we had the core skills um, booklets when booklets made sense. And then the pandemic came around and having paper materials made no more sense. And that kind of coincided either with you guys developing this or me becoming aware of it. But that's when I realized that this, this all these materials actually exist online. And that was stunning. And then we've kind of bought into this hook, line and sinker. Um, in the sense that um, the same long list that Rachel just showed you, we basically shelling out for all of these courses as well. Um, we don't have the GED, I just realized that. Um, but um, the point is that I have such flexibility with this material to serve a huge range of students and their learning needs. People who are coming in with really, really low skills, I mean, true ABE, adult basic education level, they, can, they are served with the tape, the early tape materials. Students that come with kind of medium level, end of ABE, beginning of high school, do really well with the pre-HSE materials until they move into true high school materials, which are represented to us with either the upper tapes or then the high set and the GED materials. So that's... That's a stunning range. And what Rachel was saying earlier is once they learn the system, all these pages are built the same way. So I've actually decided early on that, I don't know about your students, but when there's something called, let me just click on it. When there's something called an introduction to the course, right? Students will skip that unless you make them actually go through it. So course outline, what is flashcards, no student, no self-respecting student would do this unless you make them. And so we've built slide decks to go with this where we're forcing students to engage with these pages. So that was our initial reaction to us, to students basically just going to the practice questions right from the start, not even reading all, and not taking advantage of all the built-in materials that Rachel was just showing off. So we made these accompanying uh, slide decks where we're forcing students to react and we're also building in some other materials just for more practice. We kind of have moved away from that as the um, as the site got more advanced, I feel. Um, so we're not doing that as much anymore, but it was really, really helpful in the beginning. And to force students, I love my students, so this sounds worse than it is, but to force students to try out the highlighter function, you know, to comment back, did I use this? How do I use my flashcards and have guided practice around the study skills? That is a really rich material to guide that conversation. And for my adult learners, that is a very necessary thing to do. Um, and I'll compare it with other, I don't know if you've heard of IXL or other things that are con, that are, they go straight to the content. There's not a lot of conversation around how do I access content? How do I learn? How do I study? How do I remember something? And my adult learners don't come with those skills. I don't know about other people, but that is executive functioning and study skills is not a strong suit of most people that come in. So um, the other way we're using this now, so there's two, I would say two basic ways we're using it as a standalone material and as a component of courses that we're writing. And it, it serves both purposes. So it's a very well done self-contained material like Rachel was just walking people through. And it's leveled in the sense that if somebody did pre-HSE math and now they're ready, they showed us with the post-test, they're ready. Now they can go into the, um, let's say the high set math or they can go into the tape D. Um, it's also really cool, I have to say, as a building block material. And I thought I was gonna focus on that more. So we're using Canvas as an LMS at our school. And I've built many a course with the materials out of New Readers Press. Um, I was gonna show you 
a range in the sense that um, our local community college is Berkeley City College, and we've developed both an, a math and an English course that is the transition course to the community college. So we did an, did an articulation um, pilot with them, and we're, we're back designed our ultimate courses in English and math to be curricularly aligned with the first course that our students are typically placed in. And it just so happens that in math, that's a statistics course um, that our students get placed in because that's kind of the beginning math course um, at, the BC, at BCC. And so we build a course that, um, yeah, that includes all the um, statistics, data representation, probability components from the New Reader's Press uh, materials. And it's, I personally find it very cool, but I am a curriculum instruction geek, so that's better to everybody else. But um, I'll just show you, and I'm not going to click on a ton of shelves. I just want to um, show you how we did this. So we take advantage of, so this starts early, 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 right? So let me see if I can get my annotation going on here. So this is the lowest ABE level you can think of. But the way California writes its framework, there's statistics and probability in the kindergarten level, right? So you can find second grade materials, the equivalent to second grade materials that have measurement and data in them, for example. So we assign the tape E2 entire data unit. That's one of the units. So I don't assign the whole tape E2 in this case because I'm focusing on one specific strand within. Um, so that's my really, really low people. They're already doing work here. Uh, I should probably delete my, my little mark there. Um, then similarly, they're moving up the levels. Then I'm assigning the M2, the tape M2, and pull out those two units. And we're always um, deepening the practice opportunities with, we, we have a license from IXL where there's just a hundred more ways to practice with line plots if someone needs it after they've gone through the unit on New Reader's Press. So this is a mix and match. Then we're moving up to D2. It's gonna get more serious. There's a statistics unit in the D2. Then we've made it to algebra level. So now we're deep into actually credit bearing um, high school level work. And then probably my favorite, is that there are summative assessments already built in that are standard aligned because the tape is standard aligned and that are true to life summative assessments for these components. So that's the use that we do um, for the math course. And for um, my English capstone course, we're doing a similar Model. So the, the community college tells us that writing an argumentative essay is the English skill that our students need to have when they come. And um, we're using different materials, but there's a good chunk in the New Reader's Press that is really, really useful for this. So let me just scroll without making you dizzy. Um, so unit one starts with really simple, you know, writing topping sentences and all of that. And then I can literally pull assignments that make sense to deepen, to deepen that work and to give them the beautiful sequence of guided practice and independent practice that is built into each of these units. And then I'm gonna make you dizzy a little bit. So this goes on for a while. Close your eyes and try to make it to the end. <laughs> um, so here are they now, they're writing full essays. And there's a lovely, I'd say, I'd, I'm all fresh and I call it grammar, grammar mechanics that are, that just provides them not just with practice, but with explanations, which is really nice. And then there are at the, in the high set reading and writing is actually a full high set um, essay that you can assign that has scoring in it and some comparisons. So that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is for our upper end students. This is right before they graduate and go on to college. But I wanted to just show you, I don't know how much time I have, but I'll just show you one more course. Um, no, I'll show you two more courses because I can. <laughs> um, one is <laughs> our, our lowest, really our incoming students that really have a hard time adding three numbers together. 
And so there's two ABE courses that we build around using NRP as one of our building blocks. Um, and again, I have such a variety of things to choose from here. And I'm, we're really, really using the assessment opportunities here. So we're getting a baseline by giving them the lowest pretest there is. And then we're building the course on top of that. So in this case, they go through the entire course. And then they do some extra practice if they need it out of IXL. We can have a conversation during our, converse, uh, our panel discussion later why we're doing the IXL piece. Um, and then at the end, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> There's a lot. Um, we end up using the assessments. So if somebody does really, really well on the pretest and on the units and the practice questions within RP, I might not even publish the IXL pieces. I can also be very, very intentional. If they struggle with a certain skill, I can give them additional practice in a different, um, on a different site. And then there's the post-test, and then I have actual, actual quantitative data that is that says they are finished with this with this part, and I can move them up to the next one. So there is post-tests for the tape E1 separate, the E2 separate, and then there is a cumulative test that is truly a summative assessment for that level. So that's really, really nice. And then I want to show you one more thing, and then I let somebody else talk. Um, We've built a bunch of science courses here. And that's truly kind of a Frankenstein type of course. This is Earth, Earth and Space Science just for kicks. Um, and here I'm pulling together an actual textbook where I've done the old fashioned, you know, scan in the textbook and do the activities. There are some IXL materials. And then I'm going to scroll just because the bottom is more interesting for you here. There are NRP practices very specific to certain topics. And that's where the search function comes in nicely that, that um, Rachel was searching. So I was looking for something specific, specifically about pollution, sustainability, renewable, uh, renewable energy and conservation. And there's a pretty nice chunk. It's a series of probably five pages within the science course that you can pull out specifically. It's really a building block opportunity. And then same for the solar system. So just to, oh, one more thing I wanted to show you, because we have students, like I said, who um, are going the HSE route. So their ultimate goal is to take a high school equivalency test, but we also have students that are just filling in holes on their transcripts. And there's a pretty nifty way you can use, I think it's nifty. Um, you can use the new Reader's Press material for that in that the tests, are both cumulative for the whole subject. So here the, I picked pre HSE reading and writing, it doesn't really matter. Um, but there are also individual units that have review tests. So um, let's say, let's say I'm using, let's say the social studies, right? So our students, if they have a high school transcript, most often have their world history under their belts because they still were there as freshmen. They often have maybe one semester of US history under their belt because they, when they dropped out of school was junior year. Um, and so our job is to give them the most direct line to those missing credits and not over, you know, over expose them to stuff. So they don't need to take the whole high set social studies piece. What they need are specific content materials. So that student I just talked about can seriously skip over unit one. They don't need the credit in world history. They do, however, need the credit, let's say, in history, or maybe they need the American government credit. Most of our students don't have American government or economics because they dropped out before senior year. And so then I can do one or two things, which Rachel, I think, alluded to. I can give them that test specifically to that unit. So my student who needs five American government credits can take the review test for unit three. And if they sail through that, get 100%, life is good, I give them five credits, they move on. I can also then analyze if they don't get a high score, which lessons they should review. Maybe they know the branches of government, but they don't remember, I don't know, the role of the president or something. Um, 
So I can really tailor to the student's need what they need to do because all of our students are on, a, on, a, on the clock. They wanna get out of here as quickly as possible. And I want to be justified in, give, in giving them credit because we're accredited in the same California. So I can't just say you're a nice person, here's your American government credit. But if they can pass the high set section on American government, they're, they're good to go. And we, because we know how important writing is, always then build an essay at the end in where they do some sort of a research paper on government in that case, so they don't get their credits just by taking a test. But it's such a good, clean, standard aligned way of knowing if they know what they need to know to be considered a high school graduate in that area. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's I, great. <laughs> wow. Well, was, <laughs> I have a question for you um, regarding Canvas, because, you know, K-12 has been doing Canvas for a long time. Now, yeah. adult education is really coming on strong. How have you guys migrated Canvas? How is that like? Can you talk about that a little Funny bit? You should ask, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> so initially, we pulled it in as a, an external URL. Each page in, in New Readers Press has a standalone uh, web address. And so you can drop that into um, Canvas as the assignment, right? I don't know how much people know about building Canvas, but th that's an easy way to do it. It's like you just drop the, the web address in, they click on it, they go there. Um, Rachel and our instructional technologist and you guys as coders are actually currently working on a more direct integration where New Readers Press will be one of the clickable things of outside, um, what is that called? Outside platforms that are integrated. Yeah, it's, so it's fully integrated so that you'll be able to actually have the New Readers Press content within Canvas and just quickly select what you want to put it into your module, as opposed to copying a URL and bringing yeah. it into Canvas and, and putting it into Canvas as a specific hyperlink. Yeah. So it, it's just so, going to be a much easier way to navigate. Canvas yeah. and NRP together. Right. So the, yeah. the, the integrations in Canvas, if people have built Canvas courses, if it if it's integrated, you can literally just click it and pick the, the skill off of the site. You and it just makes magic and then and the, somehow it appears right there. The advantage of that is is that this the, the, the links are stable. Because what we've just discovered is that as New Readers Press is developing their materials, the links change. And yeah. so a student would click on a link that used to go to adding unlike fractions with unlike denominators, and it took them to the beginning of the math course or something. Yeah, we and, had added some audio pieces to the course, and yeah. it, it, it made some small changes that we weren't anticipating. And so right. now this should be a much more seamless approach. And thank you, Eva, for being the pilot program for us to work out no. the CI integration, because I think it's going to be so beneficial to so many programs. Yeah, and I have to say, um, it's been a pleasure to work with the team because I, literally they're real life people. I mean, it's really Randy and Rachel. <laughs> so, so if you if you're a user and you run into something, I mean, Rachel is there and they they actually do something about it. I feel like yeah, I emailed her, I texted her this morning. Um, no, but they do. It's not just oh yeah, we'll give it to our coders. Maybe something will happen. She actually jumped in and she's working with my instructional technologist on fixing this. And it's that's I have not experienced with any other program that we have licenses to. So that's pretty awesome. That's Thank cool. You. Thank you for that. Other questions from anyone here or online before we turn it over. Okay, we'll turn over to Dr. Gonzalez over at, at uh, Santa Ana College, and um, I just learned something about them that their department is one of the fastest or is the fastest growing department in the in the school, which is pretty Woo! So they're doing a lot yeah. of things. So we get to hear from her and and what they've done uh, in their program. So I'll let you share what you've got, Dr. Gonzalez. And, Tell us your story. It's going to be that. formalized. Finishing up that last chapter of my oh. dissertation. Oh. Yeah. Right I'm there. at the tail end of this, you guys. <laughs> Thank Good you so you. much. That motivates me, Randy. Yeah. And and I will start off with where um, Eva. Thank you, Eva. That was such a great learning um, okay. experience with your presentation. Um, 
I will, I will start off with where she left off. And that's that you guys are humans. I mean, honestly, like we have <laughs> also dealt with, you know, just robotic answers and, and just, you know, looking and looking for support. You guys are a phone call away, an email away, and you guys are answering our concerns, supporting our teachers all the way through. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and so that leads me to, you know, just being grateful for being part of this pilot. Um, Santa Ana College, we are the non-credit side of the, of the college. We have 20,000 students just on the non-credit oh. side. Alone with our high set program, which is the fastest growing program in the entire college, we have 2,300 students. We grew about 44% during the pandemic. Oh. And when everybody was just, you know, trying to just figure out how to get people through the door, let it be just a blessing, you know, the silver lining of the entire situation. But we were having the opposite. Alexis <laughs> Alegria, who's my co-partner in this, the coordinator of the program, and I just couldn't couldn't find enough day, you know, days in the week or hours in the day just to keep afloat with the workflow <laughs> and, and registering students and all the amazing things that come with an increasing program. But with that said, one of the biggest blessings that, that our department had, and, and again, our program is just the high sit GED. I also oversee the ABE component of it. So what happens with our students is that um, if, you know, we do offer the high sit and GED in English and in Espanol. So we offer both components of the exam. And with our English students, many of them come through the ABE pathway, just like Eva was describing. Um, and our Spanish will come in through the Spanish ABE. We do have a Spanish pathway um, that leads our students right into, into our high set GED courses. So to that extent, when you know when speaking just the high set GED component of what we do is we have seen a growing, and again it may be the region, but our growing numbers have primarily been in the Spanish arena. Um, our English is great. However, you know, we have seen in, an increase and in about 80% of our students are taking the high sit in Spanish. Um, and our classes are geared in the language that they're taking it. We do have a team of about 20 teachers. And we do offer our classes on Canvas. We offer them in person labs as well. So when it comes to when it comes to the usage of the software, our students are using it at home as homework, or they're using it with the teachers to review materials together as a team. So one of the one of the primary ways that that um, that we are using it is in the classroom. The teacher will have access to to using these questions as practice questions. So they're reviewing them together. And what's something really fun that we all do as a team here is we will project the question on the screen on our Canvas page or even in the classroom on our Elmo. And we'll have the students, if they're on Canvas or on Zoom, they'll chat in to the discussion, like what their, what their answer is, okay? So we'll say, okay, now question number one, let's read it together, A, B, C, D. And then they will type into the chat what their answer is. We have one of our teachers, Ms. Ortiz, who's super tech savvy. He presets his, his material ahead of time. And then he just has the students answer on their, on their Zoom through a quiz. But we do this you know, jointly with the software, something that the students love to do. So especially as we finish a unit, like let's say US government under, under the social studies exam, we will go on and use specifically those questions because as you guys described, they're very easy to find. They're very easy to access. And again, they're formulated very similar to the exam. So our students love the exercises. They love the interaction. They love the practice and the fact that they're so they're structured so well and so similar to the actual exam. So that's one aspect of how we've been using it. The other aspect is that we do give our students access with their, with their passwords and login and they work from home. 
Okay, so then from home, we will assign homework. We'll say we just finished such section or this is the homework for tonight, go home and, and work on such unit or such lesson. And of course, our teachers are then checking their progress. So all in all, there was a lapse of time and our students were so disappointed. Our teachers were so disappointed. Where's the software we needed? Because there was one teacher who specifically used the software in her classes and, and she had to go back to using the books, which was not her preference. But now we, we are back on board and everybody is happy. I do, have a, I do have something that I like to share. The program is, and you may wonder, how are you using this with your Spanish students? Well, the program is written in English. However, we use the Google, the Google extension translator and we can very easily, and look at the magic of this. I mean, we so easily change the language like in a click of a second. Thank you, I, I was ready to show that, but you're so much faster than I am. Um, yeah. So, and you can, you don't even have to just- I apologize, easily. I thought I would jump in and just show how oh, easy- Oh, please, it was. Rachel, I appreciate so any language. Again, if your students are of any other language, you know, you know background, they can do this and, yes. and they can do this so easily. Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Persian. I mean, you name it. This is such a beauty. Or Latin. Latin. Can you do Latin for me just for kicks? <laughs> <laughs> I think the high set in Latin would be funny. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? <laughs> and it's just such a gift, you guys. Like, you know, yes, we do use the the and you know the new readers press high set uh ged series and they're wonderful. We love them. They're such great books. However, especially in the pandemic. This was such a great, you know, saving grace. I did my math. I'm not a math person, but we did graduate 33% more students the year that we were using this. Um, and so again, we're back on the bandwagon. We're using it again. Um, and, and we're just, we couldn't be more excited. I do have a testimonial of like three, two minutes. It's, it's Sochi Rodriguez. She's one of our Spanish students. It is in Spanish. You know, I'm happy to present it to you guys. However, yes. I can I can I can simply summarize what she says, and that is that she loved using the software. She used it in preparation of her math exam. She passed that math exam with the help of the software and using it both home and with her teachers. And and she was getting ready to take her her reading test. And I am so happy to report to you guys that she took it yesterday. She, re, she came back to me today and she goes, Maestra, she goes, I felt so comfortable taking my reading test yesterday. Cross your fingers that I passed it. I should hear, you know, quick, you know, soon from it. This is a lady who has struggled with the reading test. She, this is her third time taking it, first time using the software. So she just felt a world of a difference. So I'm happy, and I just had that conversation with her this morning. I'm happy to present her testimonial, um, and, but and and it's in Spanish, but I'm also just happy to summarize what she had to share. That's awesome. Quick question, Dr. Gonzalez. You said that you had a 33% higher graduation rate, and this was during the pandemic. Yes, ma'am. That is just incredible. Yeah. Just yes, ma'am. It's awesome. You know, my my very own sister-in-law is dean of a nearby college, not naming, you know, names. And okay. she was just like, how in the world are you doing this? Uh. <laughs> you know, and, and she's struggling just to get numbers for just general classes. And you're doing this for the high set. How do we do this? Social media, word of mouth. I came out on, on, on local radio stations announcing our programs. And, and just reaching out to the community is what made all the world of a difference. And, and we were just, we had students as North as San Francisco and as South as San Diego. And again, our school can service anybody over the age of 18, so long as they're California resident with an address, with an address in California, which is I'm sure the case for also, um, you know, Berkeley and other community colleges. But yes, you know, it, it was a real surprise to us. And, and we were just like amazed by the, by the results, but we couldn't have done it without this software, honestly. 
Dr. Gonzalez, um, I would strongly recommend that, you know, there, and, and Randy, you guys can do this too, but um, having some kind of white paper or write up on this. Mm -hmm. as, I, didn't, I didn't tell her to say that. I, <laughs> She, honestly, because um, California Department of Education needs to understand the value of this um, and, and and help the agencies and be and encourage agencies to understand the value of using these online tools yeah. because it does make such a difference. And I'm you know you you what you've done is just incredible within the situation that we've been dealing with with the pandemic. I'm, it's just amazing. And I really want you to get the recognition for what you have done and what New Readers Press has provided and the support that they've provided because nobody else is getting this done. So you're going to be pretty famous. <laughs> you know? I appreciate amazing. that. Thank you. Yes. No, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a team effort, you know, and, and I just feel like in a weird way, all the pieces kind of came together and at the point where we were most distressed and, and, you know, it just, you know, we see the numbers and we're like, wow, like, honestly, like, you know, it, it's, it's hard to beat just because it was at a point in time where so many colleges were just struggling, including our own college was struggling in other areas. But, but again, you know, it was just, I guess it just, you know, it was a, it, it just all came together at the end. And honestly, working from home, students had access to yet yeah. another skill, another, 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 um, uh, what is it, another tool um, at their disposal. So, you know, I, I think it, it, it speaks volumes. Right. Eva, did you? Yeah, I just had a question. Are your numbers steady now or did they go back down? You know, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, you know, once they reopened everything, our, you know, most of our students had to go back to That's work. That's the experience we had too. We yeah. had an, it, we actually had an influx in student, in certain students too. Our ESL program had a big influx yeah. and our AB student uh, program had a big influx, but those are essential workers. And when they had to go back to work, all of a sudden we lost them again. Um, it, we had the exactly. weirdest data point that we just pulled, um, which is, we're in the middle of a self-study for, for reaccreditation. So we had to play around with all this data. And what we found was that women who checked Arabic as their dominant language, the increase in enrollment, participation and persistence during the lockdown and online mostly instruction was through the roof for this subgroup. Yeah. And it dropped like off a cliff once we went back in person. And we're right now struggling to come up with programmatic changes to get these to get that group a meaningful mm -hmm. experience of education. Mm -hmm. um, they will not come to school for a million different reasons, mm -hmm. but they're clearly interested in working mm -hmm. towards you know attaining higher educational um, levels. So mm -hmm. anybody any ideas? But basically, that was the most astounding of all data points that we saw so specific to the gender and so specific to the home language and yeah. remote learning was the answer. And I'll tell you, Eva, um, our, our community, mainly being machista, um, mm -hmm. machismo, I had so many women open up to me during the pandemic and say, thank God, Maestra, for the online classes. Yeah. Because when my husband, and with all due respect to my own culture, when my husband closes that door to go to work, I open my computer and I log into my classes. Exactly. He will let me go to school and I would never be able to do what I'm doing now if it weren't because the classes are being offered online and you guys have these softwares that I can work from home. Exactly. I, and they're doing this conversation when the husband's out to soccer practice and they're having this conversation with me when the husband's not home. Yeah. Okay, and exactly right. that I'm documenting in my in my dissertation because because it is a true catastrophe that these women because of ethnic you know rigors um you know let it be one ethnic group or another do find themselves in these situations unfortunately yeah. but fortunately to them you know there's now these additional tools yeah. that that they can use prepare from home even from their own phone yeah and and be okay and get ahead something yeah. that they've always wanted to do mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yeah, isn't that, it, that, it just, it, it breaks my heart, but it's the reality. Yeah, yeah. we've got, uh, we stop at 10 minutes. Oh, you're 10 minutes? No, it's 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, good. I know you've got some of your um, success stories, and before we do that, though, I do want to, I do want to say, you know, this wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having this right now without OTAN, you know, yeah. setting the stage for all this, because they, yeah. they led the way to, um, to put this all together, yeah. and now we're, you know, peeling back the onion after the fact so you know those this is it's like you said adriana like this was a team effort with everybody coming together so absolutely absolutely yeah we would have never had the funding to even embark on on such a discovery had it not been because of the pilot opportunity right and just to reiterate it's very difficult to find materials that are low level academic and don't look like they're made for second graders. Yes. It's, and they're insulting to adult learners. Yes. And we have, like I said, we have licenses for all kinds of different stuff. All of our students say, finally, this looks like it's made for me. Yes. This is not a little cartoon character running around adding fractions together. This doesn't look, even the video you were showing, it has a grown up talking right so if you're looking for materials and they're really hard to come by that are made for low skilled adults this is a real good place to go um it's 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 respectful i would say respectful of the adult learner and that's that's really hard to come by right and it's hard to find stuff that's solid to to things that the students need to know for the exam for example yeah. The scientific process. Are you kidding me? I've dug, I've looked everywhere, and yeah. and all and the New Readers Press has such an amazing coverage, step yeah. by step, with practice questions yeah. that I just direct my students to that, and I say you need to know this because everything yeah. in the science will be scientific experiments. They right. take that test, they take that those modules or those lessons, and they're like, I get it now, teacher. Yeah. We actually yeah. built a science course, a two and a half credit science course based on that unit. It's beautiful. <laughs> so it's there's my, one in pre HSME and one in high set. And if you combine them it, and then you can, you know, adjust and supplement with other things, but it makes for a very solid pre-science course. Cause like you said, it makes no sense to delve into physics with someone who's still learning about the scientific method and scientific thinking. And it's not done like you're six years old and you need to learn yeah. this. It's made for people who, who are adults and have to get the background. So it's I can't reiterate how important that respect level is. It's really, really, really good. I completely agree with you. Do you want to play those those stories? Oh, your, sure. Yeah, I'd love to. You guys will meet Sochi. You guys will meet Sochi here. Yeah, I just saw her this morning and she was ecstatic. She's like, Maestra. I'm like, oh my gosh, Mihai, you're gonna, you got this, you got this. <laughs> you got this. All right, oh. so let's meet Sochi. And granted, I'm happy to then also answer questions after. If you know, I let's go. Sound. Mm -hmm. Did you turn on sound, and, we're, and she's Is that gonna, better? There we go, yeah. Is that better? Okay, I'll start it again. Yeah. All right. Muchas gracias, Sochi, por estar con nosotros el día de hoy. Um, Sochi Rodriguez is one of our one of our high sit students. She's obtaining her high sit in Spanish. We're going to conduct the interview in Spanish, and we're and she's going to cover a little bit about her experience with the program and also how how the software has helped her the new readers press software así que gracias sochi nos puedes decir un poquito por qué estás con nosotros en el programa porque estás sacando tu high set um, primero porque me gusta estudiar y se me hizo muy interesante el high set nunca había oído de este programa cuando me empecé a involucrar me gustó y me gustó más que nada porque obtenemos un certificado y es como un, una meta que nos, bueno, que me esforzo, me esforzo yo para, para sacar el certificado, más que nada. Exactamente. Uh -huh. Muy bien. Y 
tú fuiste una de nuestras muchas estudiantes que usaste el software, ¿verdad? ¿Nos sí. puedes dar un poquito sobre tus impresiones de, de New Readers Press software y, y cómo es que te ayudó? Is this what she talks about how it nos comentaron en, en una clase, creo que fue de matemáticas, que usáramos ese, nos dieron esa, ese privilegio de mandarnos el, el software. Y me gustó mucho porque te da la idea de las preguntas para el examen. Este, y vas identificando paso a paso y si, si te ayuda mucho el, el estar participando en ese programa. Y pues muchos lo hacemos, no nada más yo, hay varias personas que lo hacen, pero sí, me ayuda mucho y, y ahorita estoy en eso de volverlo a intentar con el de lectura, porque me ayudó en matemáticas, pasé mi examen y voy a volverlo a intentar con el de lectura. Perfecto. ¿Y cuáles son tus futuros planes con tu high set, ya que lo hayas obtenido? Mi, esa es una buena pregunta, mi futuro. Mis planes va a ser continuar y continuar con lo que yo estudié anteriormente. Este me va a dar como una, un soporte para continuar estudiando. Quiero estudiar psicología o sociología. En el colegio sí. y en la universidad. Primeramente Dios. Excelente. Pues muchas gracias, Sochi. And that, and that is my, my interview with Sochi. In the interview, she... She, um, she shares how the software helped her pass her math test, as mentioned, how she's now using it to retake her, her reading exam, which she just took yesterday. Ironically enough, it's just all happening again at, you know, with, this, with the timing, um, and how she and other students in her classroom benefited tremendously. And she just calls it such, she calls it a gift, un regalo, like how she was able to receive a password and a username from her instructor to be able to do this from home. And her dream is to become a psychologist or a sociology major in the near future at the college. So wow. there you have it, you guys. Thank you for allowing me. It's such, a, it's such an honor to share a little bit about our students who we endlessly and you know, just work so hard for. Um, the, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to share her story with you all. Thank you. We love those students. Thank yeah. you, yeah. This okay. is why we're doing this, and, and it's because of you guys and everybody here uh, that makes this happen, you know. So thank you. And if there's questions, we'll we'll kind of wrap it up with some questions. Um, anybody here or online have some questions before we uh, we call it? Are there any questions? I need the wheel so I can spin the wheel to ask. <laughs> Okay, Kathy, you're on. It's you. No, I'm kidding. Oh, look, she turned her camera on right when I said that. <laughs> but I just want to thank everybody. Unless you do have a question, Kathy, I didn't mean to, you know. No, I, I just want to say thank you so much, everybody, for presenting because you really um, are kind of giving me a different framework. We, we've we just been talking about pulling in that uh, the pre-HSE core content into ours. We use the, the high set. Um, materials and really, really like them. So uh, it's nice to hear uh, how other programs are so um, having success in implementing. Yeah, so we've collected a little bit of data on um, how long it takes people to get through the HiSAP material. And it's becoming very clear, and I think I didn't say that earlier, that um, it's easier to convince a student that they have to start at a lower level than they think. They all want to just get the HiSAP done if you have the, the, the level below. So if you have the pre-HSE material that are, they look the same and they're clearly leading up. If I put the two side by side, it's very clear that one is the earlier version of the later. It, the buy-in from the students is much greater and the time it takes them to actually get the high side level completed is shorter. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a little counterintuitive, but it's true. By going through the pre-HSE materials that are intentionally structured a certain way and have these built-in assessments, it actually prepares them so much better for the high set material that they have less, fewer experiences of frustration and failure and having to do it over and over again. It's much smoother and they pass at a, at a higher rate with less having to repeat. It's pretty astounding, actually. Well, I'm not. It's not. Uh, we know as educators why this is happening. But to students, it's it's so much cleaner if the material teaches them the, the foundational levels. 
than us looking at them struggling with a high set lesson and then having to do all the backtracking ourselves. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's it's psychologically it's better for them. And from a just an efficiency standpoint, the data are showing, at least in our case, that they get through faster and with a higher success rate. I'd love to see that data, Ava, if you wouldn't mind sharing with me at some point, I would love okay. to. Okay, truth be told, the sample size is at this point so small that I'm not gonna share this data. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Both students know. <laughs> CCA, you got will yeah. present your data at the next conference. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. So, More to that. All right. Well, yeah. thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, our our speakers. We appreciate you. And to OTAN and to Chula Vista Build School. So all we're right. signing. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.